Hey you guys, welcome back to Lisa and Company. If you are stopping by here for the first time, welcome. I hope you enjoy our brand of DIY design and decor. Today I am participating in Sammy at Unicorn Dust Designs Try It Tuesday, cause I thought, why not? Let's give it a try. I am doing three projects today inspired by other YouTubers, and that would be The Daily DIYer, The DIY Mommy, and Heidi Sonball. So I hope you will enjoy them. Let's jump in and get started. So first up today is a project I saw Christina at the DIY Mommy do where she turned one of these old spoon racks into a jewelry holder. Now mine is going to look a little bit different from my inspiration because Isabel has more earrings and rings than necklaces. So we're going to do a couple of different things. I'm using this Dollar Tree box frame from a previous DIY to hold all her rings and I'm simply going to take my miter saw and cut a little piece off here. With a little back and forth motion you'll find these pieces come off really easy. Now my girl loves hoop earrings and I really struggled with a, an easy way for her to hang those hoops because if this is too complicated she just won't use it. So I had these wire baskets from Dollar Tree and I'm going to cut it off in a sort of larger piece than I need and then I'm going to trim it down to exactly what I'm looking for. So my idea is that I will put this right at the top and I'm going to go ahead and mark the holes and then drill little holes for every single one of those pieces. So here you can see where I've cut it down to the size that I actually need and I just used my side cutters from the dollar store and they did a beautiful job. Although I am going to tell you my hand is getting a little tired. You can tell this piece was handmade and the person took pride in it and signed the back. Now I'm going to go ahead and fill these holes and while they are drying, I'm going to work on this little pot for the top. I was really struggling with what to do in this area. I didn't want anything too fancy and I figured since Izzy is nuts about plants, I would cut one of these pots from the Dollar Tree in half and we would attach it up at the top. Now those edges are sharp, so be careful. I just used my tin snips to cut them down and then I'm going to use a pair of pliers just to bend them down a bit. For a couple of reasons, I need something to glue to when I attach it to the wood and to stop myself from cutting my fingers. Next up, we need to prep the Dollar Tree box frame and I'm simply going to pop out that little wood piece I had in the center. And of course it leaves that little piece that sort of uh, holds it on. So I have an idea for how I can make that work. I'm gonna put one quick coat of paint on the box frame and that little pot. Okay, my friends. I've got the box attached and I used E6000 and hot glue, of course. I attached my little pot that I cut in half and can you see what I can see? Cause it's making me crazy. Now don't laugh too hard. I'm blaming DIY Danny for this because I was watching her video and she's freaking hilarious and I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. So this is one of those do as I say, not as I do moments and Oh, I am gonna put a little plant in the top there because Izzy is nuts about plants. She's gonna hate that I'm putting a fake plant in there, that I'm not doing something real, but I'm hoping whatever I put in there will mask it and make me less nuts. Ugh. Anyway, let's keep going with this. Time to paint. Now in order to mask that little annoying nub that I could not get off, I'm actually gonna use two pieces of the cork. One that I cut out and that will level it off and the other one to go on top and that's gonna make a really nice surface for her to throw her rings in and I figure she can also put her little stud earrings there as well. I actually have a terrible feeling that everything's gonna end up in this little tray and that's really what I should have done in the first place but a mom can hope, right? We live in hope. 
Now I have this really cute succulent and I love the color. So I've popped in a little bit of uh, floral foam and I'm just gonna glue this on top. And I am gonna angle this rather than put it straight down. I want you to be able to see it from the front when it's hanging up. Well, take two. I really needed a little bit of moss in there and I didn't angle that just right. So we're gonna do this from the front so I can really see what I'm doing rather than trying to work sideways. And it works out much better in this case. Now it's time to attach my wire basket for hanging her hoop earrings and guess what? All that chalk paint filled up those holes I drilled. So we're just gonna go back really quick and re-drill those just to basically clear out the chalk paint. And with a little finagling and futzing around, we are gonna get this popped in. My recommendation if you try this is just work one hole at a time. Don't stress yourself out. Don't worry if you scratch your paint a little bit. It's easy to fix up. And what I did was I had the holes go all the way through and it was much easier to have them pop through the back. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of hot glue on them, both to help them stay as well as to protect me from those sharp ends. In hindsight, I wish I'd pushed them through even farther and bent them over. So definitely one of those do as I say, not as I do moments. I put a couple of her pieces on it just to see if it worked as well as I hoped it would and it absolutely did. An easy place for her to hang up her hoop earrings, a cute little fake succulent, <clears throat> which I'm probably gonna get in trouble for, and a great place for her to add her rings. Now you guys should know, Izzy actually has a ring business and I am going to link that down below because she makes absolutely beautiful jewelry. guys if you have not checked out Sammy's channel before make sure you hop on over there not only does she do really great farmhouse DIYs she's freaking hilarious so I hope you enjoy her videos just as much as I do alrighty I've started taking these apart and I've already done a whole bunch of them and Heidi is absolutely right what she says in her video it's not hard but your hand will get tired so I busted out these guys. These are, well, I call them bolt cutters. I don't know what else anybody would call them. Um, they're epic because they've got that whole ratcheting thing. The only thing is you gotta get like above it and work your way down. So I kind of have them on the floor. So for this one, I'm just gonna show you really quick what I did. So once you get that tag off, you wanna take all of these guys uh, off. Like This isn't even the hard part, seriously. Okay two and three. So I now have so many of these chains that I'm gonna have to think of a cool DIY to use these for. Now, I have these side cutters. I picked them up at the dollar store. They're actually pretty good. So I'm just going in and cutting these. Now I will say that with these side cutters, I'm getting a lot closer than I did with the bolt cutter. Oh, I can't show you, it's gone. Um, oh my word. Oh, okay. Oh, I made a huge mistake. I was supposed to leave two of these intact. Well, folks, good thing. <laughs> I always buy more than I need. All right, I'll have to think of something else to do with these ones. I'm all done. It's like invasion of the baskets here. So I'm just gonna take these ones apart, take the tags off them, and then we're gonna start putting them together. For this part, you wanna start slowly and carefully straightening those up. I just did it bit by bit. And then using your needle nose pliers, you're going to curve over those edges. Now I have this one assembled and I'm gonna say that this was my first one and I tried something different. I had my hooks going in and they really should have gone out. So now that I put the next one together, I am going to do it, air quotes, the right way. 
I am going to make sure to link Heidi's video below so you'll be able to see exactly how the master did it. Now this is the fun part because it goes together really, really quickly and it's very satisfying to do this. Now this is when I'm doing three high. Um, I think in Heidi's video she actually refers to this one more like a bird cage than the dome which the two one is but you got to think this is three dollars and I'm actually gonna use a Dollar Tree plate to put this on so we're talking about four dollars or in my case in Canada five dollars because these were all a dollar twenty five each but five dollars for something that at a boutique or really cool garden store you would be easily into the forty fifty dollar range so I love it when we get a project like this. Once you loop that piece over, you just wanna go back with your pliers and give it a really good pinch so that it doesn't slide around. And you'll know that you've got a really good pinch on there when it stops sliding around. Now, I did find I lost a little bit of paint on these just from pinching it over and over again with my pliers, but I have a solution for that, so stay tuned. Oh, I am so excited with the way these are coming together. So now it is time to work on embellishing the top. I've been saving pasta jars for a project and I normally throw away the lids and for some reason these had not made it into the trash yet. So I'm going to use these. I'm going to use a combination of E6000 to hold it on and some hot glue just so it stays right away. Now I don't just want to pile a whole ton of glue on there so I'm just marking where each of those pieces touch the lid and then I'm going to go and put my E6000 in those spots. Then from this side I'm going to add a whole bunch of hot glue while it sets up. For the other one, I'm gonna do it a little bit differently. So you can see how on this two high one, the way I put the lid on, but it was tricky. So for the other one, I'm going to use the flat side of the lid to attach it. And then once that's dry, I'm gonna flip it over and add a second lid to that one. Now, before I do it, I am gonna add these cute little wooden finials to the top. I had a pack of two in my stash. I don't even remember how long ago I bought them, but I think they are perfect for just finishing off the top here. If you didn't have something like this, you could use just about anything, a couple of beads. Heidi actually uses a table tennis ball in hers, and once it's painted, it looks fantastic. So this is one of those moments where you get to shop in your stash and use a couple of things up. Now you can see up close on this one how I stacked the two lids and then I added the finial. Now it's time to take these outside and spray them and I'm actually gonna use this high heat barbecue paint and I got that tip from Sandra over at the Schwowin's Nest. That paint creates a beautiful true flat finish and you can use these domes for so much. I've done one here with a wreath and a candle and the other one with one of my faux greeneries. I just love the way these ones turn out. So next up is an umbrella door hanger and I'm super excited for this one. I'm a little later in the season than I would have liked and I can't get any more of these because hello lockdown. So I guess I'm just gonna say that I'm fortunate that I got these ones and this, most of this came from Dollarama. I'm gonna get started by cutting these apart. I find it a lot easier to work with and we're not gonna be using the full stem on this. So we just want them long enough that we can tuck them down. I'm actually going to go ahead and cut off the tie from the ribbon. We're not going to need it and it's more likely just to clutter it up and get in our way. We're going to focus our attention on three pockets right at the front of the wreath and we're going to be using tissue paper to stuff those and make them look a little bit fuller. This was such a great tip and I lucked out. I thought I had white tissue paper at home and I didn't, but I had blue tissue paper that was literally exactly the same color. 
I'm just gonna call that one a happy accident. Just gently tuck your tissue paper all the way down in the umbrella. Don't scrunch it up, don't overstuff it. You're gonna kind of just know as you're putting this together. So I squeezed mine a little bit more at the bottom so it would fit the shape of the umbrella and lift it a little bit looser towards the top so it would make those folds look nice and full. Now it's time to start adding our flowers and I am simply going to tuck those in until I get them exactly where I'm looking for them. I didn't wanna hide the handle and I wanted to make sure they were a little higher in the middle and a little lower on each side. And really because you're not gluing these in and I'll show you why after, you can really mess around with these and just play with them until you get them exactly where you need them. Now this is why you didn't have to worry about hot gluing those in there. I'm going to use a piece of twine to really cinch those in and that's going to do a couple of things. It's going to create a place where we're going to put our bow as well as hold everything in place. While you're tying it you can really shape those folds and get them exactly where you want them. Make sure your stems are in the right spot and generally just kind of glance over it and make sure you have everything where you want it. I tied this fairly tight because again, this is the way I was holding all those stems in place. I decided to use two ribbons for my bow. I wanted to use the blue ribbon that I had that matched perfectly, and I'm sorry, but you can't have too much buffalo plaid, so I decided to use those two together. I am making a super simple bow. I'm just folding it over till I get it the right side. When I'm making these bows, I like to cinch it in the center first before I add the twine, and I find it just makes for a tidier bow. Then I like to add a little piece on the front just to sort of fake that it's not tied. I'm just gonna hot glue that on the back and then we're gonna glue this right down to the umbrella. Actually, we're going to glue this to the twine because this umbrella is plastic and I was a little worried that it would just melt the plastic. You guys, my mom was so excited when she saw this and there's nothing better than making something for someone you love and having them love it as much as you do. You guys, that is it for me today. I really hope you enjoyed these projects. I am crushing on them big time. I'm really excited to use those domes all over my house. My mother is crazy about the umbrella door hanger and it did make it onto her door last night. And hopefully we have found a way to corral all of Izzy's rings and jewelry and earrings and all that fun stuff. So you guys don't forget to make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you know every time we upload a video. Thanks again for stopping by and we'll see you next time. You guys, don't forget to check out these other videos and of course, hop on over to Facebook and Instagram and follow us at Lisa and Company where we share all kinds of stuff that you won't see here on YouTube. Thanks for stopping by and we'll see you in the next video.